How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the Hollywood Lot Life, where we explore the ins and outs of the elusive entertainment industry. If you've ever dreamed of working in Hollywood or making it as a studio executive, then this is the podcast for you. This show is brought to you both on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. So welcome to the show and thanks for joining us. Today, I have a very, you know, different, but still very relevant in our pop culture um, take on entertainment, and that is in comics. For those who aren't super familiar with the comic book world, the guest we have on today works for the company Webtoon, which before we jump into meeting with him, we're going to learn a little bit about his company as a whole. Webtoon is the world's largest digital comic platform, home to some of the biggest artists, IP, and fandoms in comics. As the global leader in, and pioneer of the mobile webcomic format, Webtoon has revolutionized the comic industry for comic fans and creators. Today, a diverse new generation of international comic artists have found a home on Webtoon, where the company's storytelling technology allows anyone to become a creator and build a global audience for their stories. With a massive catalog of, of incredible digital comics from rising stars on Webtoon Canvas platform, uh, a growing roster of superstar Webtoon original creators, there's something for every type of comic fan on Webtoon. With 85.6 million active users and Webtoon adaptations on Netflix, HBO Max, and other screens around the world, Webtoon's passionate fandoms are the new face of pop culture. The company has worked with DC Comics, Marvel Entertainment, Hybe, and many uh, more of the world's biggest entertainment brands. So, my guest on today is Ethan LeBlanc. He's a huge nerd, gamer, comic, and anime lover, former podcaster, which we will definitely ask him about. He's raised in the South and escaped to Los Angeles and now is working in the comic industry. Ethan, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Happy to be here, my friend. Very excited to chat Webtoon um, and other things with you. Yeah, no, it's awesome. I think, you know, we get so fixated on what's you know the box office and you mm -hmm. know all these other big flashy things but no one really talks about how massive the comic book anime industry is in american culture it's huge man it's great and and it's also like uh, i think it's it's becoming increasingly more difficult to talk about box office stuff and big movies and things without talking about a lot of the sources for a lot of this. So sources for a lot of series. I mean, just look at the MCU. Um, it's a huge thing that comes from decades of, of comics um, kept alive by fans of comics and superheroes and things of that nature. And I think that is increasingly uh, more, it's increasingly more common for us to have movies and other feature films and shows and things like that related to uh, manga and manhwa and digital comics as well and stuff outside of uh, Marvel and DC and so I think it is a uh, very very cool to chat about this as it relates to you and your podcast and what you're talking about and sort of Hollywood um, as a whole so excited to be here thank you yeah no it's perfect I you know when I was coming up with the idea for this podcast you definitely came to my mind because I was just like yeah Ethan you know he may not think he works in entertainment is what you know, your average person talks about. For, for me, that's one of the mediums that is definitely a part of entertainment. So the question I have for you is, what is like your official title at Webtoon? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am currently a managing editor at Webtoon, meaning that I run a team of editors. Um, and <laughs> I don't know, that's, that's the very basic answer to what it is. I started out as an editor myself and sort of... Uh, spent some time editing series and bringing on series to the platform and then moved from there to where I am currently, which is, you know, leading a group of people who are doing nothing that I used to do. Um, and uh, I still get some editing in from time to time, but it's, uh, it's a little more rare with my current responsibilities. Um, but it's a good time. Ah, bummer. Well, I'm very intrigued to find out more now. But before we get into that, let's rewind the clock and yeah. start at the beginning. We, I introduced you as a Southern boy, so you're <laughs> not from L.A. Where are you from? I'm not from L.A. I'm originally from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, uh, born and raised uh, there and in the suburbs around there. Um, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's my basic and pretty boring origin story. That's where uh, I'm from and I've lived uh, most of my life, a little, little Cajun boy, uh, spent some time uh, outside of there, 
um, in a couple different places in California, uh, but have now landed in LA. I've been here for about five years. Um, but yeah, <laughs> don't know what That's else. A good you chunk know. of time. <laughs> So who inspired you or what inspired you to kind of like not only your love for comics, but mm. the industry as a whole and wanting to work in the comic book industry? Yeah, man. <laughs> I, I think I was always a fan of like drawing and um, uh, sort of artistic stuff like that. And it was, I think this would have been fall... 2002 I think is when this happened um, or earlier um, I was around 10 11 years old um, and I I've watched some Toonami I'd seen some some Dragon Ball Z a little bit and uh, I was just I think I was just in Walmart with my mom uh, on like some kind of break might have been like Thanksgiving break or something like that and we were in the checkout line um, and I looked up and I saw um, uh, Goku and I was like oh that's that guy from Dragon Ball Z and he was just sitting there on the magazine rack and I picked it up and it was the, the premiere issue of Shonen Jump in America um, so the first um, issue of it um, that was I think I think the date for that was 2003 January 2003 uh, but it came out you know just a couple months earlier uh, get the hype going and uh, it was just thick thick ass magazine I didn't, I didn't know what I was holding uh, but I just knew that I needed it in my life and um, so I just like I was just like ma and she's like yeah sure whatever uh, and just like very casually changed the trajectory of my life so did you go to school as an editor or what did you <laughs> study in university <laughs> I don't I don't think there were any uh, webtoon classes just yet <laughs> I think we're doing our best to make sure that's more of a thing now but uh, I um, studied what my university called it digital art. I, I uh, that was the name of my program, um, and I, I didn't go to any particular art school or anything like that. I studied at Louisiana State University. Um, uh, it's a big university in the South, um, and uh, essentially they just have an, an art college and art department, and you can declare sort of different trajectories that you want to do. So I just followed the digital art one. Um, got a Bachelor of Fine Arts in with a concentration in digital art, and that primarily means that I studied um, 3D uh, modeling and 3D animation with a concentration in kind of uh, how that applies to the video game world. So I was very uh, video game centric um, and thought I might go into that realm and, and did work for a little bit in that industry um, during college and shortly afterwards. Um, but, you know, I think. <laughs> what as far as any kind of like education that I got in comics uh, I the most education I got was just reading so many freaking comics that makes total sense so you graduate from school are you you're lo obviously wanting to go in this sphere and you're mm -hmm. looking at webtoon did you just apply or how did you get a job working for them yeah so um while in college, I moved from a, a rough call center job, not, not centered around my, my uh, major at all, into working in, I got a local a job with a local group, like a tech firm doing uh, websites. So applying a bit of my, some of my graphic design knowledge, it's not very good, I'm not the best graphic designer, um, uh, to, to websites and stuff. And so I, I stuck with that through the rest of college um, and then got a job with them, a full-time gig with them post-college, and I was just looking um, as best I could for anything, any opportunity. I think if, if there was any relative work that I was doing, I was also um, selling artwork at uh, conventions. I would go to anime conventions and comic cons and things whenever I could. I would, I was hitting like six a year i was doing i was wow. doing the most uh i think i just really desperately wanted to not be <laughs> doing what i was doing for my day job and not be trapped in louisiana and uh but i was so i was taking any opportunity i could to get out and, and sharpen my skills and share my talents um and just applying for tons of things um but there's a you know i think i think a lot of art i mean 
a lot of art school people as well as um, just anyone I think in coming coming out of college and looking for that first job or getting trying to get into their careers always you know uh, looking to apply and applying as much as they can um, and I think I, I was in the boat of just like looking for anything that was remotely interesting or remotely related to what I was doing applying I was applying to animation studios to video game studios uh, like I said I had a, like a small gig doing a bit of animation for um, a video game that'll probably never ever see the light of day um, and then uh, but I think everyone also has these moments of like when you find the company that you really do want and like like you actually put <laughs> a lot more effort into that um, application like uh, my when I I had been reading Webtoon for about a year, I think when I saw that they were looking for interns, and I was like, <laughs> and I'd been out of college for probably eight or so months, I think at that point, and, <laughs> and but I was just, I I was not deterred. They were like, we're looking for uh, students in the later part of their uh, college and in the L.A. area, and I was like, I am neither of those, but I'm going to apply <laughs> anyway. Will be in the LA <laughs> yes, area. I will be wherever you need me to be. Um, <laughs> so, um, but I, I, I was super stoked about, it, but I was just so, I was so ready to receive a no. Cause that's just what I'd been, I would either, it's either no's or just complete silence from all of my other, um, things. And so I, I, I was absolutely ecstatic when, um, someone got back to me like, Hey, uh, could you actually be here in Los Angeles? And I was like, I, yes, one thousand percent i could be there i had family there which is not a lie uh i just never really met them or spent time with them <laughs> i was like i i i will 100 percent. i will be out there no problem um and uh yeah i think it was just it was right time right place um and a, a good deal of luck and just just being a nerd i just happened to be one of the uh, the smaller audience, but still a pretty significant audience at that time, who was reading Webtoon and was paying attention. Um, and I, I read enough series to impress them when they interviewed me, I think. And, and that was essentially it. Um, and then when I was there, I, I apparently did something right while being an intern, and that turned into a job. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. And did you start as an editor? Or what was like your first job working for them? Uh, when I came on, yeah, I was a, an associate editor. So it was the it was the the entry level position at that time, um, and that's what I came on as. And so, just uh, I I got a little bit of mentorship from uh, my boss and and a couple of the other editors, and I mostly just I was just thrown into the deep end and just uh, working with. I got a few series assigned to me at that time, all of which have have launched now. Um, and then started uh, looking around. I guess we can talk about what an editor does, if that's what you want. Yes, that was actually my next question. <laughs> Excellent, What does yeah. like, the process of a, an editor and editing comics look like? Well, what's the daily life like? Um, so at, at that time for me, you're as an editor here at Webson, you have kind of, kind of two primary roles and responsibilities, and that is you're looking for to source series, and then you're looking to... Um, edit and develop those series that you have sourced um so sourcing and editing are the two sort of main parts of, of the day um as an editor sourcing generally comes from us looking through uh canvas which you mentioned earlier our, we have two short platforms on webtoon and that is our canvas side which is uh what you could imagine when you're when you're thinking about um really like the heart and soul bread and butter of of what the webtoon platform is which is a place where anyone can upload comics anybody can build their um, audience uh, anybody can come on and read comics for free they can uh, subscribe to things and uh, leave comments on different series and so canvas is sort of like the ground zero where anybody can put up their stuff and that's where a lot of people get started and then what we'll do oftentimes as editors is uh, through a combination of just scrolling through looking hard looking through uh canvas and and sometimes some uh data guided um assistance uh we look for a series that we think have the potential to um really hit it big and um we bring those over to the original side um or we'll, so an editor might pitch something or uh, to the rest of the team or whatever just to be like this is a series i think has legs is doing well um, what have you, and um, as a team, we'll decide whether or not to bring them on, whatever it is, um, give them the green lights, and then they'll become an original series. Um, that is the typical pipeline. There are, there are some other ways uh, that we look at. Um, uh, obviously, like we're not going to 
put like Marvel or DC on the canvas side <laughs> and uh, like there's plenty of uh, instances I think where we'll chat with um, people looking to make an original series but the primary and I think best um, source for anybody looking to get their start um, on Webtoon or in comics is to uh, go through canvas um, put their series up there, see how it works, um, get into the habit of, of putting your episodes up, uh, start telling your story, see who resonates with it, um, and then we'll find it. That's amazing. That's mm -hmm. like, you sound like, now this might be a bad analogy, but you're like <laughs> the claw, you know, like a, one of those machines looking for the yes. right toy to pick out Ooh. and send over and drop it to the person. <laughs> The claw. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's not too far off. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I'm going to share that with my team. There we um, go. Yes. And, and so that's, that's sourcing is like a, a large half of what we do. And then the other half is working with creators, which is a, a very fun part. Um, you know, we, we get the, the creator who's excited to come onto originals and we uh, work with them to help develop their story. We'll talk with them about, you know, their outline. Where's the story going? What's the end? How long are, are we planning to take to get there um who are the main characters what are their storylines what are their arcs um and uh, an editor primarily will work with creators on both their their story element their narrative elements as well as um artistic stuff if there's things that we think can be improved about formatting or the way they're composing their panels um layouts and different things of that nature or if there's anything we think they can maybe do to help speed up the process or make it easier on them um uh, uh in order to produce things on a regular basis because that's a uh, a tough job and we uh want our best for our creators so we do our best okay. to find different ways to help them out with that mm -hmm. this is the perfect segue for this next question i have for you so it's what are some of the biggest issues you see that creators make when they're making their episodes when you go to like help them out biggest issues so like i guess we say like like difficulties in transitioning from canvas or doing their your first uh big webtoon original series you know it varies it, it really can vary um i would say with all art and with all artists there's um i think there's the temptation to uh work on something until it's perfect right this 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 word um and i think uh that that will never come be it will never be perfect it will never be exactly um i think the way you want it to be and so i think learning to be a, a little less precious with things is, is sometimes a difficult uh uh lesson to learn but often very necessary for anyone i think going into any kind of sustained consistent um creative um endeavor um and that's in webtoon or in uh, TV and film or anywhere else. There's there's this element to um, get it as as good as it can be or good as it needs to be, and then and move forward. I think that's something that's a, a a difficult thing for a lot of creators to to learn, but I think a necessary thing in some ways. Um, and just to further your own protection as a creative against things like burnout and things of that nature, but also just um, I think when you move from uploading on Canvas at your own pace to moving to originals, there's, there's these new expectations are, are on you as, as the creator, um, and that can be rough sometimes. Um, and so, again, doing our best as editors to find ways to help them um, get comfortable with where their stuff is um, and, and reassure them that things are going well, that things are where they need to be. Uh, we don't need to spend... Um, all the time on this thing and that we can uh, focus on certain parts that I think are, are really, really worth our time and improving. Um, and we can, we can leave sort of the other things uh, uh, to uh, exist as they are. Um, I think that's a huge thing to learn. And that's something that I think we all learn, editors included, um, uh, as far as what takes what is worth the most investment to improve or to change versus what is um, uh, maybe not worth as much time into. Uh, and uh, that's a difficult thing because art is precious to people and uh, to the people making it as well as um, can be pretty important to uh, those receiving it on the other end. But the other thing about that is like, you never know what people are really gonna focus on 
and uh, sometimes what you think I think is, is re really important to you as a creator may not be um, a huge deal to a lot of the people that are reading your series and so it's always it's this balance right and it's uh, that balance is, is, is not easily obtained or learned but it I think it has to be for any kind of sustained um, creative endeavor like I said before well and that and that's what I think is so great about entertainment in general is you know it's all art and we all see it differently some may enjoy you know the oscar bait kind of film versus you know a classic anime versus uh you know big money box kind of movie and they all have different takes and you know it's for whoever is enjoying it let them enjoy that yep. so um one thought I had is how long does it take you to edit one of these episodes? Is that what you sure. call it? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Comics? That's how we refer to our, our our series have episodes that release, and usually it's uh, weekly or more. Um, and man, that's another question that that can vary quite a lot, and it would vary also depend on, it would depend on where the the series is in its lifestyle and how um, or life cycle and how. Um, experience the creator might be um i think with creators who are uh new to the platform or new to the format or it's their first original and things of that nature we'll often spend some time going through every sort of possible point we can with them just to make sure all the little bits and parts of the process are are good and fitting and, and working for them as well as us um you know uh so it could amount to, you know, we're spending several weeks talking about the outline, several weeks talking about um, episode beat sheets, um, and then we're spending X amount of time looking at just the layouts of an episode, and then X amount of time looking at the inks, and then X amount of time on whatever, what have you. Um, so I think early on, episodes can take, um, uh, as far as editing, uh, <laughs> it can take several hours to a couple of days, perhaps, depending on what you're, uh, what you're really looking at and what you're getting into as far as... Um, because it, you'll see different parts of the episode, or you'll see the episode in different phases. Um, so you might give feedback on something on Monday, leave that with the creator, they maybe get back to you on a Thursday, be like, hey, this is the revisions I've made based on what you said. Be like, cool, looks good, move forward. Um, and then maybe the following... Wednesday, you'll get uh, inks from them or, or colors or whatever, what have you, um, and then um, you work in that. But that's that's early on, I think. Once you're in a groove, it kind of goes faster. Yes, and, and, and mm -hmm. at least for me specifically, I think with a lot of my creators, uh, it, it gets to a certain point uh, where like I would just look at layouts for an episode and be like, yep, that looks cool, you're doing great. Um, and then I would just review the final once it goes from there. Or And if they're really really killing it and they, they're farther along uh creators we've had for a little while they just turn in final episodes and i'm just like yeah this looks fine or Perfect. no this Good is a job. typo or this is a change whatever whatever have you so yeah it it, it, it varies <laughs> um that okay. process varies a lot um but yes it depends primarily on where the series is in its life cycle and how experienced that creator might be um with us and how they jive with your editing style as well mm -hmm. okay okay that totally makes sense. So what's like your favorite genre to work on when you are working with these different creators? Is there one that you like working with? <laughs> um, yeah, probably. I think, and, and that just goes back to uh, what I was talking about before about the, the types of series that I got into when I was reading manga. Um, and that is just like, I love action series. I love shonen series. I've taken a liking to thrillers as well. But I think when I was first in... When I was first made an editor with the company, um, we uh, on the editing team, we all kind of just had our own. We didn't have necessarily directives as to what we were supposed to look for. Or we all just kind of looked for stuff that we liked, uh, that we thought would do well. And I just kind of took a liking to a lot of the action series that we had um, and uh, was w not the only person looking at action, but one of the primary people looking at action series. Um, and I think from there, so that sort of morphed into where I am now, where like, the team that I lead is kind of all focused on that, just because that is um, what the sort of the vision I saw and or I had of, of uh, wanting this to be a place where wanting Webtoon to be a place where like you know 13 year old Ethan who was just super into uh, all of this 
uh, Shaman King and uh, Naruto and Rave Master and all these uh, shonen sort of classics in my eyes um, and ideas um, where that Ethan would come onto Webtoon and be able to find that kind of stuff as well and, and really uh, enjoy that. So that's sort of what I focus on at the time and that's what my team sort of, sort of focuses on now. We don't uh, we don't pigeonhole ourselves into that. We have plenty of, of variety, I think, and anyone who gets onto Webtoon will find the variety in the Webtoon series there as far as genre is concerned. But um, I always like a good action series, a good shonen, a good uh, <laughs> a good journey um, for a young, plucky character to go through. Um, and uh, I am still on about that, still looking for that, and that's what I like. Very awesome. I think I would agree with you. I would definitely want to be in the action space. That's, mm. you know, where I love to go. Um, so it all sounds like, you know, sunshines and rainbows. What are, like, <laughs> some of the best parts for you about working in your industry? Uh, hands down, I think my favorite thing to do um, is meeting creators. Uh, we work with just so many. We work with hundreds of creators across the globe, right? And yeah. um even just for our, you know, um, English-speaking platform, uh, there are plenty of people in different time zones, um, different countries, all over the place, and uh, it is not often that I get to interface with them face to face outside of a call. Um, so it is, and has always been a joy, I think, to me to meet up with them face to face in person. Often at events and conventions is where that typically happens. Um, and conventions have always been close to me in my heart, um, just in general, because I like them so much, uh, even outside of this work. Um, but then be able to meet creators like that and say, oh, this is the person I've been working with for months now um, on this series and talking about and being like, because uh, you get to uh, you, you, you get to know them pretty well and you get to, um, it feels weird to say intimate, but that's sort of the, the idea of like intellectually and emotionally um, intimate with their own stories that they're trying to share um, and giving feedback to them and uh, and you get to meet them in person and hang out and it's really cool it's always super satisfying and fun I love all of my creators and I to this day haven't met all of them in person yet but I, I hope that that opportunity arises for all, each and every one of them um, but yeah that's such a joy and it's such a blast because the convention you're there especially if you're there with webtoon like if we have a booth or something like that um it's just a big celebration of um us our community our creators and their fans and then getting to see them interact with their fans awesome so cool um just it's it's such a good experience and so fun and i think it's good for them as well to to be able to interface with their uh fans directly uh it's just it's so cool it's so fun that's that is the biggest i think most rewarding part for me um and i think uh next to that if there's anything else it's uh launching a series like when you get to a point where a series is ready to launch you typically have been in production for a good long time and you've probably been talking about this series for well over a year because you had to bring it to a pitch meeting and then you had to get the green light to reach out to the creator and then you reached out to the creator maybe made a better pitch or whatever or or talked about what's where we can go from there and then we bring them on to the original side and then we talk about the series from that point and we give them uh, edits and notes and points and move through improving the series or getting it ready for launch and then we make a bunch of episodes and then we finally launch and finally get to see what the readers think about this thing and it's just uh, that day is, is again another sort of celebration I think of the work that your creator has done um, to put in and, and to a degree that you have uh, done to help them and it's uh, yeah, it's a celebration of that creator and their series, and it's a very very cool moment and fun time, uh, typically speaking. So those those moments I think are the best and most rewarding for me um, as an editor. It's so interesting because to me, when you're explaining this, it sounds so similar to what I experienced in the movie industry of like, you know, directors make their content similar to creators making their comics and helping them bring this to life. And then I get to meet these creators in, you know, and fans love these movies. And so I, I can definitely see, you know, the parallels there, which I think is really cool. But, you know, every day isn't the best day. Like some days suck. But like to you, what are like the biggest struggles for you in the industry? Um, 
I think a struggle that I've I've hit and come to, and I think that it is constant, is just like the unpredictability. <laughs> is that the word? Is that a word? Uh, of yeah, just like I think so. what people are really going to gravitate to and and like. Um, uh, and I think we can we have these predictors, we have these different things, these points of data and stuff like that that can give us a good idea. But you're never going to know how people are going to react to a thing until it's it's out there uh, in the ether of the internet. Um, and uh, that is that is a struggle sometimes. That's challenging because I think, um, especially as an editor, when you're sourcing, uh, an early lesson that most editors have to come to is that like my my taste. It's not necessarily going to dictate what is good and what works. Um, yep, yep. And I might love this thing. And all of us, the whole editing crew, might love this one series and think it's great and standard. But I think uh, just because we're like so steeped in it all the time, sometimes our, uh, our idea of what is really refreshing and cool and fun for us as people who consume so much of the, of the media is... Uh, sometimes skewed to the general reader who gets on a couple times a week and just wants to get their their fix uh of cool action scenes or, or a nice uh romance and you know are these characters going to kiss this week are we, are we, do we get there what's what have you um and and so it's it's reconciling that um that hard lesson of like just because I like this thing does not mean it's going to be great. Um, and the, the, the reverse is also true. I might really hate this thing or dislike it. I don't think I hate any series on my platform, but uh, I, probably, I probably just don't jive with this. Like, I read this and I'm like, I would read maybe one more episode, but probably not be too much on it. But then, like, our uh, audience would just devour it um, and, and love it. And so, like, um, I think that humbling experience of, oh, I don't actually have all the answers. Just because I'm, I am an editor and I'm here at this part, I don't necessarily know all of the, all of the things. Um, I have a good idea of what works and what doesn't. And I have a, um, I have a lot of tools at my disposal that can help me have a better idea than most uh, or your average person. But, um, at the end of the day, we, we, sometimes we just have to shoot our shot and see if this works. <laughs> that makes sense no i i think that's you know a great thought and you just power through those days that you're just like oh, this sucks and then other days where you're like yeah i am in heaven pinch me right now yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but i kind of want to shift gears and ask you you know on your podcast that you did because oh, you know, yeah. you're on a podcast and <laughs> i want to you know highlight yours and i think that's pretty awesome do you want to yeah. talk about like kind of what you <laughs> talked about on your show and what your show's called sure sure um uh, i and and bear in mind i haven't had i haven't released an episode in years but this is uh it's right. called it's called those nerds you know um and okay. i made it with my best friend david um uh we started it off i think both of us just really wanted to be creating something, be putting something out, because I think he and I both just love a lot. We watch a lot of YouTube. There's a lot. We love um, these sort of independent creators that just get on and talk about things that they love. We were also listening to podcasts at that time. We'd gotten sort of both gotten into podcasts around the same time and the same kinds of podcasts, um, which were like I think at that point it was like the the Weekly Planet, which I think we both still listen to. Um, really, really cool. Um, sort of. Uh, superhero comic book movie podcast uh two friends just talking about stuff that they like uh and uh we just sort of took that in, and he was always just uh <laughs> i don't want to sorry sorry david and i'm not gonna beat up on you too much but he was always just griping to me about like he, how he really wanted to be like making something and i was like well let's just fucking make something it's it's a podcast it's low entry it was a podcast in 2017 like very low bar uh, um yep, and yep. uh and so just like um complete like we didn't have any fancy uh video equipment um with like tiktok i don't think was around or if it was it was still called musically or whatever it was yep, before yep. The TikTok. oh i remember those days um <laughs> and so like it just it just it wasn't as big of a thing wasn't as big of a deal and we um didn't need to make youtube videos um i think we tried a couple times but mostly we just we just record and then put out these stupid long podcasts, man. Like we, 
talked for so long and the podcasts we liked were long and so like i it, i think we were kind of blind to this idea of like oh this is a 20 minute podcast so like i've never heard of that in my life every podcast i listen to is two hours minimum <laughs> so um we would talk a lot and uh uh, we were early days of recording. We were just using. We had just such terrible equipment. Do you remember the game, Rock Band? Of course. How could so I? So Rock. I had Rock Band for the Xbox 360, and it came with the mic that it comes with is just a basic Logitech USB mic. So I would just plug yeah. that into my computer and just no. rest it on the table, and we would no. talk like we were talking through like a fucking trash can. <laughs> man, it was such garbage um but we eventually we got better um got this decent mic that i have now um and uh yeah but it was just mostly just us talking about um different anime or manga or movies that we liked um and i think the only place that it still exists is on youtube because we would upload it to multiple places i think youtube is the only place that still if you wanted to listen to it you could find it and listen to it please don't i i have no idea what it sounds like it's probably got some <laughs> awful takes from me from back then uh, that don't represent where I'm at as a human being now. Um, but uh, maybe one day we'll get back into it. It was, I, it was a very fun time, and I think it, very, it kept me, especially when I moved to Los Angeles. By that time, um, my friend David was off on a mission for his church, and so we had switched co-hosts to my friend Eddie, um, and uh, I think for a little while the podcast was just sort of for my own mental health because uh, it was good to just uh, be able to once a week vent. be forced to sit down, yeah, vent, yeah. talk with a, a friend of mine who knows me from back home, um, and and have that time to because moving out to LA when you don't know anybody out here is a very lonely experience. <laughs> um, even if you have some type of community, like I met you pretty early on, and True. I think I, I developed some friendships, but like even that, it's just it's it's um, very bare bones and minimal because like you don't. I didn't know anybody, and, and there's people I had known for decades back home, but I didn't know anybody out here for nearly that long, for more than, you know, a few months, and so having that break where I had to sit down and talk to, to, to Eddie and, and talk to him about, like, his life, where he's at, and that, things, that kind of thing, and then we just nerd out about a couple of nerdy things for an hour or two, and um, just throw that on the internet, and it was a, a fun time. Uh, <laughs> but yes, if you feel like going back and listening to any of it, you're okay. welcome to. <laughs> but it's gonna blow up now. Be cautious. Just wait. <laughs> I, uh <-huh. laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so my last question for you yeah. is: for those, this is for the kids that are, you know, walking through the grocery store with their mom, who stumble upon this comic book, and now are loving life and want to get into editing as a comic book you know artist what advice do you have for them to get into the industry to get into the industry I, if, if we're talking specifically editor stuff um i i don't know that i could tell you that there's anything better than um what i have done which is just to consume like read a bunch uh know exactly what you like and then learn a bit of terminology to be able to talk about what you like um maybe read a couple of books about storytelling chuck into that um understanding comic books by scott mcleod is very cool it's up here on my shelf um the but I would say look into that, look into it, and there's tons, there's so many um, good creators on, on YouTube, I think, that, that um, go through movies or TV shows or even talk about manga and anime. Listen to them, listen to what they're saying, see if you can apply any of their knowledge or terminology to why you like something, see if you can accurately describe why you like something and why someone else might like that thing. Um, but yeah, I'd say read a ton um especially if you're talking about getting into the the editor world i mean, i was just man i cannot i cannot <laughs> accurately describe to you how frequently i just bought a new random series uh that i saw in the bookstore when i was 14 just because it looked interesting i had i started so many i had so many different series um just on my shelf um and vary uh the types of series that you look at um if you're if you're I, i'm not like the hugest proponent of putting yourself into uh, uh debt for school um but if uh that is an okay thing for you or if you're looking at that if that's possible and that's in your um wheelhouse there are a lot of 
um, art schools that are looking more intently at uh, Webtoon. Um, so I would look out for that kind of thing. Um, and but I think generally speaking, a lot of I think a lot of the editors from my generation, when other people that were hired around my time and people that it was very funny and just an in joke amongst us about that all of us were just animation majors. <laughs> like we all just learned animation and we were like, yeah, you just, if you want to become a webtoon creator, you just uh, learn how to animate and then uh, <laughs> then you just apply to webtoon. Um, and I think there's there's a lot there's, there's plenty of overlap I think between. Um, film and animation uh, TV and then webtoon and comics just because we are all telling stories right um, and we're all trying to figure out the best way to tell that story in the format that we have chosen um, and so I think being able to uh, talk about how you do that talk about how um, viewers readers etc fans can connect to your series, why they can connect more easily than they might connect to a different series. Um, learning the ins and outs of that kind of thing. Um, if you're looking at, like I said, if you're looking at going to school, I'd say almost any kind of uh, storytelling, entertainment storytelling um, uh, type of degree or uh, program could be beneficial to you. Um, in that regard, um, that's if you're looking at editing specifically. If you're looking at being a creator, there's plenty of other things you can do, and I, I don't know necessarily that um, uh, any one route is particularly the best route for it. Um, but if you are looking at that, and even if you're looking at editing too, I, I'd say best experience you could probably ever get, put something on Canvas. Uh, make a little series, throw it up on Canvas, see how um, it interacts with people, interact with your fans, get in the comments check out what people are saying about it um all that kinds of uh that that type of experience will be just so incredible for you moving into any professional um portion of the industry uh to just already have that understanding of how that not only how the platform works but how readers respond to you what you've seen work well for you and your story and where and not work as well um make friends with other creators um all kinds of stuff I think just being involved and um, like I said not not waiting for something to be perfect but just putting it out there um, and seeing who jives with it who vibes with it and who wants to see more of your series and why um, and yeah just getting that experience on your belt of making something and putting it into the world will do you a world of good far better than um, wondering about it or trying to study or trying to be perfect before you put it out don't worry about that just put it out Amazing. That's great advice. I mean, that's what I'm doing with this show, right? Yeah, there you go. That's what we did with our podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just make it and put it out there. Yes, 100%. Well, Ethan, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for talking about Webtoon and comics and editing and that whole world that I think, you know, needs to be more in the spotlight <laughs> than it already is. So thank you for coming on. No worries. And, you know, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Or if you're listening on podcast, please follow on, you know, whatever channel you are listening on currently. I would really appreciate it. And if you enjoy the show, tell your friends. You know, that's the one way we can grow the show and help those who want to work in entertainment in general. So thank you. And you know, we'll see you on the next episode.